and welcome to this to this webinar, World Youth Day Safety and Security. My name is Jonathan Sitko. I am the Assistant Director of Programs for the Catholic Apostle Center. And I'll be helping with some technical questions um, related to this webinar. If there are any um, problems that you have, feel free to use the chat feature in your right-hand corner to make sure that you can hear all of the great panelists, um, as well as there will be question and answer period um, throughout the conversation. So feel free to use the chat feature as well, and Charlotte will be able to handle and field all those questions for you. With that, I will hand things off to Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Welcome, everybody, to our webinar on safety and security. It's always one of our most popular World Youth Day webinars because, of course, uh, the safety and security of our pilgrims is uh, one of the most important things um, that we want to attend to during World Youth Day. I'm excited today uh, to have with us um, Stephanie and Tom from the Embassy. Uh, could you all just introduce yourself for a moment? Stephanie? Thanks, Charlotte. Hi. I'm Stephanie. I'm in charge of American Citizen Services here at the Embassy in Panama City. Uh, so if you or any of your group members have an emergency, you will most likely be interacting with someone on my staff. And today I'm here to give you some advice to help prepare your groups um, and answer any questions that you have. And I'm here with my colleague, Tom Rhodes. Hi, Tom Rhodes, uh, Regional Security Officer here at U.S. Embassy Panama. I'm the uh, Supervisory Special Agent here with the Diplomatic Security Service. We're the law enforcement arm uh, of the State Department, and we work very closely with, uh, with Stephanie and her staff in the concert section. And I'll be speaking about just broader overall security overviews and, and some helpful hints. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome to the both of you. Um, we're glad to have you. We're also excited to have Paul Jarzembowski from the USCCB with us. And it looks like you have somebody with you, Paul. Yes. Hi. How are you? Uh, this is Paul Jarzembowski. I work at the USCCB. Um, I'm the lead staff for Youth and Young Adult Ministries here at the conference overseeing World Youth Day. And with me is Kelly Walsh, um, my assistant here at, for World Youth Day, and uh, who will be also assisting us, uh, assisting all the pilgrims and, uh, and bishops uh, during the time in, in Panama. All right, welcome to Paul and Kelly. And my name is Charlotte McCorkadale. I work with Ministry Training Source, and I'll be your host on this webinar and on the upcoming World Youth Day webinars as well. It's good to have all of you with us, so let's go ahead and, and get started. We'll begin with the World Youth Day USA prayer. So if we could take a moment in the midst of this week to call to mind our loving God's presence begin everything as we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, be with us on our pilgrim journey of faith. Grant us the grace and courage to step forward in faith and in hope on the road ahead. Open our eyes to see your face on all those we encounter. Open our ears to hear your voice in those who are often ignored. Open our hearts that we might be faithful disciples of mercy and truth. Transform us, empower us to give ourselves to the poor, to welcome the lost, to forgive those who hurt us, and to comfort those who suffer and are marginalized. Bless those who travel from the United States of America to Panama to join the Universal Church for World Youth Day. Bless too those who will celebrate stateside, united in faith and joy. Like the disciples who journeyed up the mountain to the witness the transfiguration, may this experience be an encounter that strengthens us for our work in the world. To the intercession of Mary, the Immaculate Conception, patroness of our nation, may we be worthy witnesses of our faith, humble representatives of our country, and inspired missionaries bringing peace, hope, and mercy into our communities. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Jose Sanchez del Rio, pray for us. St. Juan Diego, pray for us. Blessed Sor Maria Romero Menezes, pray for us. St. John Bosco, pray for us. Blessed Oscar Arnolfo Romero, pray for us. St. Martin de Pours, pray for us. St. Rose of Lima, pray for us. St. James the Apostle, patron of pilgrim travelers, pray for us. St. Kateri Tekawitha, young faithful witness from our native land, pray for us. St. Therese of Lisieux, patroness of missionaries, advocate for youth, pray for us. Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, patron of young adults, man of the Beatitudes, pray for us. 
and St. John Paul II, founder and patron of World Youth Day, pray for us. All right, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Paul, tell us where we are as we get ready for this upcoming World Youth Day. Well, um, and uh, and thanks to uh, to Kelly here, um, we have uh, about just over 8,000 U.S. pilgrim registered and 37 U.S. bishops registered. Kelly, has that changed any in the last couple of hours or days? Um, not that I'm aware of. All right, so that's, <laughs> as, that's as close as we can be to uh, our current count here uh, at World Youth Day that, that we have going over. Uh, we do anticipate by the time we get to January that we probably will have about 10,000 U.S. pilgrims and maybe a little over 40 U.S. bishops registered. So, uh, so we're uh, we're still registrations are still coming in on a daily basis. All right, great. Well, let's tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening once we get there. So, um, so Monday and Tuesday of the week, registration and check-in. That's when things. That's when people will be arriving. Uh, throughout the day uh, on Monday and Tuesday. Some will probably even arrive even the weekend before. The opening mass starts everything off on, on Tuesday, January 22nd. Um, and then each of the mornings on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there will be daily catechesis. Um, so that'll be from 9 until around noon each day. Um, there'll be uh, presentations by bishops, music, uh, animation, small groups. There'll be a lot of conversation and dialogue with other young people, closing with a mass each morning. Um, and in the afternoons, just for those who know, uh, usually in the afternoons and evening, there are festival events as well, uh, which are concerts and exhibits and, and all kinds of uh, events that really um, are, are, are helpful for kind of really getting into the experience of World Youth Day. The Pope arrives and is welcomed on Thursday of that week, January 24th, um, and then uh, he, he will lead um, us in a way of the cross, a via crucis, on Friday, January 25th. On Saturday, January 26th, we will have a candlelight vigil with the Pope, and then a closing Mass on January 27th, which is Sunday. Of particular importance is that we are going to have uh, a, a U.S. festival gathering, a gathering for the, those, um, it's actually going to be a gathering for all pilgrims sponsored by the United States, um, specifically the, the USCCB focus um, in collaboration with the Knights of Columbus are putting on a, uh, a basically a whole day event on Wednesday, January 23rd from 3 to 10 p.m. So one of the festival events will be this opportunity to gather uh, together um, it will be bilingual, um, English and Spanish, um, but it will be featured, um, it will be developed and organized uh, by uh, the United States for all pilgrims, but we certainly hope uh, U.S. pilgrims will join us there. Uh, we'll be releasing a schedule soon, but uh, uh, there will be things going on from 3 until 10 p.m. that day in uh, where we're having this. So, um, so many of you, um, when I when I was talking about like the main events, the opening, the welcome, the Via Crucis, um, that will be taking place what you see on your screen now, uh, the Santa Costera, which is indeed as beautiful as it looks in the picture. That is indeed what it looks like. Um, so you have the skyline uh, on the coast of uh, of Panama City uh, there on your left, and you see it kind of curves around, and then on the right there you see uh, the beautiful Pacific Ocean right there. So a lot of the events that will be taking place will be taking place here. So just imagine instead of cars that you're looking at there, there will be a lot of people and some screens, uh, jumbotrons. Um, so that's so just imagine yourself in the place of those cars, uh, and that's what you will expect to see uh, throughout the week. Now that particular World Youth Day gathering uh, for the United, that is hosted by the United States uh, will take place at the Figali uh, Convention Center on the Amador Peninsula in Panama. Um, it's a beautiful place, and uh, there will be uh, that's where uh, the the events that will take place on that Wednesday uh, afternoon and evening will take place, and that's not too far from the Santa Costera. So um, as you're looking at a map, um, you want to look for the Amador Convention Center. Uh, and uh, that's where you'll find it. It's just it's on one of the little peninsulas sticking out from the Santa Costera, so it's pretty centrally located. And uh, yes, that is indeed again the Pacific Ocean right in the uh, in the distance there. 
Now, as for uh, where, if you should need anything throughout the week, we are located on the Santa Castera. The U.S. CCB headquarters, the USA headquarters, is at the Hilton Panama. Um, so you'll see Kelly and myself uh, at the office. So if you should need any assistance during that time, uh, you come to the Hilton Panama, and we're, we will do our best to assist you um, uh, throughout the week. Um, but, yeah, that is located at the um, it's going to be located on the opposite end of where the altar and stage is uh, on the Santa Castera. Um, so it's on the, in a way, um, if, if you think of the Santa Castera as a giant church for the week, um, consider us being in the vestibule. Um, so we're in the back, all of them in the back of the Santa Castera, um, and that's where you'll find us and uh, if you should need any help. Okay, great. Thank you, Paul. Um, so now I think it, we're going to um, turn it over to Stephanie um, and Tom. I want to put your cameras back on there for us um, and tell us a little bit about what, what is some good news for World Youth Day Pilgrims. Thank you. Thank you both. So, yeah, I'm going to talk. Excuse me, Stephanie, can you talk just a little bit louder? It's a little hard to hear you. Yeah, a little closer. That'd be perfect. Sure. Don't worry. That's better. Yes. So I'm going to talk a lot about entry and exit requirements for Panama. And I know one question that many of us have is about the measles vaccine. And the Red Charles noted some good news. Today, the Red Charles Correct Air told us that that requirement no longer exists. So, U.S. programs do not require proof of the measles vaccine to come to Panama. Again, there is no measles vaccine requirement. Um, now, what is required? The only requirement for a U.S. citizen coming from the U.S. to Panama is that they have at least three months validity on their passport. So I would encourage all of you out there to go find your passport and make sure it is valid at least until May 2019. If it isn't, there's still time to renew it. But Panama does require you to have at least three months validity in order to enter Panama. Okay. So, so Stephanie, uh, can you just talk a little bit louder? People are having a little bit hard time hearing you. I apologize, but Closer. you were good All right. on our I repeat myself. That's better, right there. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so let's actually go on to well. Before we go on to the next slide, let me note that the vast majority of you will have uh, no interaction with the U.S. Embassy, and that is a good thing because we really are only here for emergencies. So if you have no interaction with us, it means things are probably going well for you and your group here in Panama. But we are here to help in emergency situations. And the most common emergency we see uh, is the next slide. <laughs> and Stephanie, um, can you tell us where, the, where this embassy is located? Sure. Well, we are located in Clayton, which is going to be about five miles from the slide you saw with the picture of the Cinta Costera. Now, because of traffic, it's going to be very difficult, or the lack of, of any movement on the roads, um, it's going to be difficult to get to the embassy, most likely, but we can help. Um, but we do expect there will be roadblocks, um, but we, we have good relationships with the security personnel here. So we'll make sure that if you need to come to the embassy, um, you, you'll be able to make it here. Um, so. And with that, I'll talk about one of the reasons some of you may have to come to the embassy. And that is because of a lost or stolen passport. Um, based on experience in other World Youth Days, this has been the most common emergency. Although not as common as you would think. In Krakow, for example, less than 10 people lost their passports during World Youth Day. And there were something like 20,000 US citizens that traveled to Poland uh, for the event. But if you are one of the unfortunate people that loses your passport, we can get you a new passport very quickly here at the embassy. Here on this slide, you'll be able to see the requirements for a new passport. Um, and if you do lose your passport, the important thing to do is to go to our website, because everything that's listed on this slide is listed there, the requirements, and then to call us so we can schedule a time for you to come to get your new passport. The number to call is 317-5000. That's if you're here in Panama. That's 
That's also all over our website, and it's the general emergency number. Um, and now let's go on to the next slide. So more passport information. As I just as I noted in the first slide, uh, Panama does require at least three months validity to arrive in Panama. And it is pretty common for us to see people either turned around at the airport in the U.S. or turned around when they arrive in Panama because their passport is going to expire in less than three months. So again, please, please, please check your passport expiration date and renew your passport as soon as possible if you need to. Um, now, I know that many people that are coming may not have U.S. passports and may be green card, card holders. For green card holders, the requirements are going to be a little different. So you, if you are a green card holder, you should check the requirements for the nationality of the country for which you hold the passport. You can, you can reach out to their embassy here um, or in the U.S. To ask what the requirements are to enter Panama for the country of your passport's nationality. Um, now, I also want to talk about requirements for exiting Panama. I know that many people coming may be dual citizens, so people that have U.S. citizenship and also have Panamanian citizenship. And there are special requirements to leave Panama if you are a person under 18 who is a dual citizen you require special permission from both of your parents to travel without your parents. So for those out there listening, uh, please, if you are a dual citizen, make sure that when you travel to Panama, you are carrying with you a letter signed by both of your parents that is notarized by a U.S. notary and also apostilled by your state office where your parents are granting permission for you to travel. You should also bring your birth certificate as proof of who your parents are. That should also be apostilled. And again, that requirement is not for everyone. It's only for people who are dual citizens. And that includes people that have never had a Panamanian passport, but that have a U.S. passport that says that, that Panama is their country of birth. And uh, one last point for your pass on passports. While you are in Panama, it's really important that you carry a copy of your passport around with you. We encourage people to leave their passports in a safe place at the place where they're staying, um, but you should carry a copy of your passport because Panamanian officials may ask to see it, in addition to a copy of your Panamanian entry stamp. So take a picture of it and have it on your phone. And if you can get to a copy machine while you're here, also make a copy of it just in case somebody asks. And it is pretty common uh, for people to ask for that uh, at checkpoints here. All right, next. What can the concert section do in addition to offer emergency passports? We are here for life and death emergencies. So if you are the victim of a crime, if you run into medical trouble here in Panama, we can help. We can provide you um, a list of medical resources. We can also help you connect with the police and even accompany you to the police station if you're a victim of a violent crime and provide a follow-up with local authorities afterwards. I hope that most of you do not have this experience, um, but if you do, we're here for that. We could also assist um, in terms of limited legal assistance. What we can do is basically provide you a list of lawyers that other U.S. citizens have used. And I hope that none of you end up in prison, but if you do, we can visit you in prison as well. That's one of our responsibilities as consular officers. And last but not least, we if you have trouble communicating with family in the U.S. for any reason, you get lost with your group, something happens, you're at the hospital, you don't have a phone, we can help connect you with family in the U.S with your written consent. So now let's go on to the things that we are not able to help with. The first is money. We can provide resources for hospitals and doctors, but we can't pay bills. So it's very important that, that you make sure that you have insurance when you come. And I understand that the Pilgrim's Package does come with good insurance plans. Um, we also cannot provide legal counsel. We can provide you a list of lawyers, but we can't tell you what to do if you do run into legal trouble. And last but not least, though we can visit you in jail, 
we can't get you out of jail if you end up in jail here. That's that. <laughs> and now I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, from, Tom, from the Regional Security Office, who's going to talk about crime and security preparations. Hey there, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Tom Rhodes. I'm the regional security officer here um, and supervisory special agent with the Diplomatic Security Service. Uh, to start, I just want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing uh, to work in conjunction with our Panamanian uh, security service partners. So over the last several months, we've been providing a host of different trainings um, and risk and vulnerability assessments. And mainly all of this stuff is focused uh, primarily on uh, where the Pope is visiting, we're actually providing some VIP protection training to the individuals, uh, to the uh, Servicio de Protección Institucional that's going to be protecting the Pope, along with the Panamanian National Police. Uh, we're also doing crisis management training with them and a host of other capacity building programs uh, to get them prepared for this type of incident. We do things like this uh, for like some of the Americas and other large scale events, Olympics, those types of things. So uh, we've been working very closely with our counterparts who, who we have uh, good solid relationships with here. Good news is uh, very professional security services here overall. And I can tell you uh, from a security standpoint, I've served all over the world, uh, lots of places in Africa, the Middle East, um, and I've traveled around this region. The security situation here is very manageable. Um, there isn't a lot of violent crime. Uh, most of the things that we see and what I really want to call your attention and, and, and speaking with Stephanie too is, uh, is just petty theft. Uh, there, there are petty thefts here uh, and obviously in these large scale events with lots of crowds and people together, unfortunately, uh, pickpockets and, and those types of uh, those types of individuals will be out and about looking to steal things like your passport or, or other valuables that you have. Uh, so please keep that in mind, um, you know, as you're enjoying the events here and everything else. Uh, like I said, it's, it's very safe um, from, you know, an overall security standpoint, not a lot of violent crime as you would see, you know, somewhere else, you know, at other places in the region, Honduras, El Salvador, those types of places. So fortunately, um, while there is violent crime, 60% uh, of the violent crime here is, is drug related um, and it's in, in different pockets, uh, fortunately not so much uh, in the areas where you will be, but uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't practice good situational awareness like you should anytime you're traveling overseas um, and, and keep in mind uh, the, the potential of, uh, of big pockets and, and petty theft. Uh, there are uh, robberies that happen sometimes armed, typically not using firearms. Uh, we've had some mission members here uh, that have been the victims of, of armed robberies and some private American citizens, um, but nearly not on the, the volume that we, uh, that we see in, in other locations. So like I said, and the, the other good news is that those security services here are, are very responsive. Now, given that, given the, the number of people that are coming to this event and everything else, um, you know, the, that level of responsiveness, uh, and it depends on, you know, respective venues and crowds and everything else. I think you can, you can definitely expect to see uh, a large number of, of security um, personnel in and around uh, venues like the Cinta Costera, for example, um, and they'll be easily recognizable. Um, the SPI, the Servicio de Protección Institucional, uh, and the PNP, the Panamanian National Police, are, are all in uniform, uh, wearing reflective vests often, um, and they'll, they'll uh, be there to assist you. And like Stephanie said, in the event of, of a serious incident or something that happens where you need assistance, you can always call the embassy. And, and uh, we work very closely with the consular section to assist them and, uh, and trying to address any respective security concerns. Um, the one other thing I just wanted to bring to your attention is the potential for, for protest activity and not necessarily large scale protests. Uh, for instance, there's already a group of pensioners that are, are, uh, are threatening to protest during JMJ just because they know the high visibility of the event um, and things like that. Again, the good news here is that oftentimes, uh, and, and I can only count on, on, on one hand, uh, the number of violent protests that we've had here. Uh, protest activity happens here multiple times a week. 
um, and uh, it's typically not violent. Um, and the only issue uh, probably, and this is, I'll get to this on my next point, is just uh, what those uh, what protests do for mobility and traffic and, and that type of thing, because typically the police will not uh, will not get engaged and and move protesters off of major thoroughfares or roads or things like that. They will let protesters uh, you know express what they're there to express, uh, but that oftentimes has ramifications for traffic and other things, which which we pretty much deal with on a on a regular basis here. So. Uh, and on that note, uh, just a couple of helpful hints um, on the transportation, and I'm, I, we're kind of skipping over to that piece, but Stephanie asked me to talk about that. One thing we would like to dissuade people from doing here um, is, is sharing taxis. And I don't mean if you're you know, sharing with a friend, but uh, if you get in a taxi and then you know, your taxi driver wants to pick somebody else up that you don't know, because uh, we have had instances where um, you know, nefarious individuals will get in the vehicle and and uh, and rob people. So be cognizant of that uh, when you're you're interacting with cab drivers. Another helpful hint: it's really not on the security side, but more just practically speaking, is negotiate your fare up front. Um, it's something uh, you don't want. You know, taxi drivers may try to take advantage. Uh, so you know, work with them up front and. and uh, ask them how much it's going to cost for you to get to wherever you're you're trying to go. Um, and then lastly, I'll just I'll talk about traffic. Uh, it's obviously uh, going to be a major consideration here. It's a consideration without JMJ and, and World Youth Day and the Pope's visit, but it's it's definitely going to be a consideration here for us and and our ability uh, mobility in general. That the Nunciatura is right here next to the embassy. The major road that leads to the embassy is actually going to be closed, so traffic's going to be routed uh, in a very. Uh, it's going to be routed all the way around you know, a very lengthy uh, workaround for for people to get there. So it's just. It's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, these events are, are are pedestrian friendly, obviously, and the police are working. And they they use the Cinta Costera for carnival and a lot of large scale events. So it's not the first time that they've done this. Uh, again, very good news. Uh, but just more as you get outside of the city and down uh, along the the coastal area there. Uh, you can definitely expect longer waits and traffic and, and that type of thing. Um, it's just something to keep in mind as, as, you, uh, as you plan your travel here. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions as we move on. Uh, okay, great. I have a few for, for both of you. So, okay. Stephanie, they couldn't hear you as well before, so can you please repeat um, the information about the measles vaccine documentation and I any other vaccines that people might be required to have? Happy to. So the measles vaccine is no longer a requirement for people coming from the United States, which is great news. So this is information that we received today from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So again, you're not going to require any proof of having a measles vaccine. And so there's um, no other vaccines that they need to worry about? The only other vaccine that you need to worry about is possibly the yellow fever if you're coming from a country that uh, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, considered to be a place where yellow fever is prevalent. Um, we have seen people have trouble if they're coming from Brazil. I know that most of the, the pilgrims from the U.S. will be coming straight from the U.S., so this shouldn't be an issue. But if you're coming from a different country, you should make sure that that country does not require a yellow fever vaccine to enter Panama. And you can check that on, the, uh, on our website, the U.S. Embassy website. Okay. So um, Kathleen had a question. She was wondering, you were recommending that carrying an extra set of passport uh, photos just in case um, they need to replace their passport? I think that's a great recommendation. We do have a, a photo booth on site here at the embassy. Okay. And it, so if you have you know, $5, you could also get it here. But I think it's a fine idea to also carry extra photos. Okay, great. Um, the, Paul was wondering what documentation do they need to take um, with them for minors who are not their children? Is there any additional documentation besides the passport and the passport stamp um, that you recommended? It's a good question. There is no additional requirement if you are a minor that is born in the United States 
or any other country but Panama. Now, if you are a minor who was born in Panama, even if you're traveling on your U.S. passport, you do require documentation uh, from your parents giving permission for the person that's traveling with you to travel with you. So that's that notarized and apostilled letter I mentioned. And that letter will have to say that, you know, signed by your parents stating you, my parents, give permission for me to travel with this person. And then your birth certificate to prove that the pr people listed as your parents are, in fact, your parents. And that okay. also needs to be apostilled. Okay, great. We do have some transportation questions. And, Paul, I don't know if you might want to hop back on for this one. But will transportation access for pilgrims be part of the registration? And is there a metro to... Tocumen, T-O-C-U-M-E-N, um, or do they need to plan for a taxis, and, and is there Uber and Lyft there? Is there rideshare companies there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and they probably can answer it probably as well um, mm -hmm. regarding the rideshare. Um, I do know that uh, in my trips, uh, Uber has, been, um, has worked just fine. Uh, okay. I'm, sh I'm not sure about the others, but... Um, Okay. The in terms of uh, oh yeah, go ahead, Stephanie. I was going to say yes. We do actually encourage people to use internet-based taxi companies such as Uber. We don't have Lyft here yet, but Uber is very common and it's what a lot of people here use to get around. Okay. And then um, regarding the um, what's included in the Pilgrim Pack will be access to all public transportation, so buses. And uh, and the in the train line subway, I guess is it the subway and the train? Is that the same thing there, or um, there is the line yep. that goes out? It, it is it, it doesn't does it go all the way up to the airport? It doesn't just okay. yet. It okay. may by the time by by January, but it's probably it's not. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So there is though a subway line that that does connect. It 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 parallels the coastline for a little bit there. Um, so, uh, so if you're on the Santa Castera, um, you can go a couple of blocks inland uh, to hit the uh, to hit the the train line, um, and it goes as far as the Albrook Airport, right? Is that correct? The Ar Albrook Mall Airport area. So the Albrook Mall, which is close to the Albrook Airport, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that there is a there is a line that goes through, and that is that would be included with your. Um, uh, with your pilgrim registration and any buses that also are running, if they're running. Okay. <laughs> right. All righty. Let's see if there's any more questions here for Stephanie before we move on, or Stephanie or Tom. Um, they were wondering what's what's the website that that they can check about vaccines. You can check travel.state.gov. Travel.state.gov. Yes, awesome. and then there, there's a search engine. You can put in Panama and then all the requirements. And a lot of what I just described is also located there. All right, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so is there transportation, public transportation available from the airport? Right now, there is not a metro. It's in construction. Um, but no, there isn't. You can call an Uber to pick you up, or you can take a taxi. And there are buses. There are but buses, so there is that public. Right. We're not sure how how well the bus system is going to be working during World Youth Day. All right. Great. Excellent. And so we we also have, Paul, a question about days in the diocese. Um, and, and this is kind of a question for you as well, Stephanie. Uh, some folks are going to be coming from different parts of Panama. Um, and they were wondering about if they're arriving by bus. Um, here it is. My group is, is coming from San Jose. Um, Costa Rica for the days in the diocese, and then they're taking a bus to Panama. Will our passports be stamped at the border? Is that how that will work for them? They will be stamped, and they should be stamped. You should make sure that everyone in your group does get a pass passport stamp, because that will okay. be a requirement when you exit Panama. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, I think that pretty much covers the questions we have so far. So why don't we go ahead and go on to some of the other um, oh. If I could just mention one small point, sure. and it's on the previous slide, on riptides and, and safety in the beaches here, um, yeah, as well as the weather. But first, on, on the beaches, um, I just want to encourage people to be safe, to be very careful about swimming. Every year here, we have a number of U.S. citizens that drown in the oceans. 
because mm. of, of waves. So we really encourage people to to be very careful and maybe even stay away from the beaches at this time. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, that sounds and, great. And next on the weather, and I know that this will probably be addressed later on, but Panama is tropical. It's hot year-round, over 90 degrees, and you all are going to be doing a lot of walking. So just uh, so we expect people are going to be suffering from heat exhaustion and dehydration. So we encourage those that are coming. I know you train to come, so train, train in heat in hot weather, and also be ready to drink a lot of water while you're here. And that's it. Okay, great. Thanks mm-hmm. so much. We'll catch up with some of the rest of the questions as we go. So, Paul, you want to take us through some of the additional security and safety concern and some tips and some challenges? Yeah, and really, um, you know, one of the key things is just to uh, to just keep consider- uh, considerations at all the things that we heard from the embassy. Um, so just some things as leaders for people to keep really keep in mind. Um, there's, there's about five challenges I just want to briefly just touch on and just as you – as you're preparing your pilgrims uh, to just be thinking of how your group will will navigate these particular challenges. Um, all challenges can be overcome, um, but we do want to just let you know that that, that is something that um, is something that you should be aware of. So first is your health. Um, so it will be so it will be very much unlike most places in the United States during the month of January. Um, because it will be warm there. It will be very hot. Um, now, hopefully a nice cool ocean breeze will, will cool you off, but for the most part it will be pretty warm. So uh, so keep in, in, in aware of that. Because of the transportation issues, um, know that, and, and if you've been to World Youth Day before, you know the transportation can always be a challenge. And so a lot of this will, uh, will, will, will take its toll on one's health. And so uh, be sure to consume water on, on regular occasions. Uh, make sure you eat um, and uh, make sure that you, you know your way around so that there isn't this high anxiety which causes additional stress. So keep, keep, in, uh, keep in mind your health through this process. The second so, challenge know. is to make sure that you are um, always, and I just asked to move the... Yeah, uh, just one question real quick here yeah. on this one. Uh, so folks are asking some questions about the water. Is it safe to drink? Uh, there. Great question. And um, also, will there be some water tanks available to fill up water bottles? So there are just some questions around that. And also, any tips you might have about um, what's best to wear um, given that uh, weather? Sure. I'll start, and I'll let Stephanie uh, jump on as well. Um, so the water is indeed safe to drink. Um, and so uh, you, if you go with tap water, you'll certainly be fine. Uh, bottled water will be fine. Um, in terms of what to wear, um, you know, as with as with any papal or a big pilgrimage event, um, we certainly want people to dress respectfully, but we also want people to dress smartly. Um, it's not, you know, you don't, please don't, what, what I'm wearing right now, don't wear that. Um, <laughs> that. Many people would, but this would not be probably very helpful for you in that climate. Um, so dress comfortably, um, you know, but, uh, but also dress just modestly, of course, too, but dress comfortably so that you can be um, you can you can not overheat and things like that. Um, and I and I'll maybe uh, maybe Stephanie, if she has some advice, or if uh, Tom, you have any advice about this, feel free to jump in. No, I think you, you said it all. Stephanie, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that all sounds great, Paul. The only addition I have is that I've been told that the pilgrim package comes with us. With a water bottle, and that there will be stations to fill up the water, fill up your water bottle. That's great on, news. On the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hold on, okay. I'm, I'm leaving the camera. So okay. Just to uh, let you all know that the uh, that the that the USCCB is also selling water bottles in red, <laughs> red, and blue. So you are welcome to fill this up on multiple occasions. I'm sorry, I had to do it, but you know, uh, these will be available. These actually are available right now in the USCCB store, so um, they 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 will be something you can use to keep yourself hydrated. Change um, also, plug and my apologies. Stephanie, if you'd come back on for a second, there was a question about any special requirements um, to bring prescription med- medication in, and and also some questions about medical personnel nearby and emergencies and how that should be handled. So I don't know if Stephanie, you or Tom might want to be able to take those for us. Sure. First on 
special requirements for medications. If you have a prescription medication, you should bring it in, in your checked luggage and be ready to present a prescription for it. Right, have your prescription from your doctor in case somebody asks for it in immigration. Um, and then in terms of medical care here in Panama, most of the hospitals are located near the Cinta Costera. So again, close to the beautiful picture along the along the water that you saw at the beginning of the presentation. Um, there are three private hospitals located there and one public hospital. Now, the information we have is that the programs and package insurance includes up to $20,000 of coverage in all hospitals in Panama. Um, so that's the, the, that'll be your main place to get any kind of medical care if you need it. Um, and this we're still confirming, but we also know that we've also heard that the Red Cross and the Ministry of Health is going to have rehydration stations and first aid stations along the pilgrim route. Can you repeat those names of those hospitals? And, and would sure. you mind typing into the, maybe in a moment, just type in maybe some an address of the main hospital into the chat for folks mm -hmm. so they can have that? Okay. All right. It's, the hospitals are Punta Pacifica, uh, Paitilla Hospital, and Nacional Hospital are the okay. three private. And then the public hospital is called Santo Tomas. Santo Tomas, okay. And, and as I noted, the, the package is supposed to cover uh, service at all those, those hospitals. I will put in the address for Punta Pacifica. That sounds great. Stephanie, uh, just a clarification question on that um, prescription. Will the pill bottle with the prescription info be sufficient, or do we need a new prescription from their doctor? Do we need a paper prescription is what they're asking? No, to go with no. The if the bottle includes the prescription, that will be fine. Okay, so if the bottle has the information on it, it should be fine. All right, great. Well, let's go on to the next challenge then, and we'll pick up some more questions as we go along. Sure. And and really, the the next thing is to make sure that you know you're you um, you ha ensure that you have the proper identification at all times, passports or uh, other World Youth Day credentials that are distributed. Um, so if, for instance, the situation gets chaotic. Um, it's good to be able to uh, supply your IT, your ID, but to a competent authority. Um, now, some people have the habit of either carrying around their passport, which is one option, or some people make copies of their passport and present a copy. Um, but either way, whether you have the passport or the copy, and honestly, in, in, in these crowds, it's probably best to keep your passport back in a safe and then carry around, you know, your your, your copy of it. But uh, but make sure that you you can find that. Uh, having the copy will also be helpful in the case there you should lose your identification. Uh, that will be very helpful when talking to our folks at the embassy as well. Um, so identification, keep that in the credentials you'll have on you for World Youth Day. Um, I, you know, they may. I'm not sure what they're exactly going to look like, but uh, um, whether or not they're cumbersome or not, they are going to be very important for your safety, and they will ensure that you get the transportation and any of the services that are, um, are part of World Youth Day that you get with your, uh, with your package uh, are going to be important for that identification. So keep that challenge there and to make sure you're always be able to identify. The third challenge is ensure your ability to communicate. Um, know your points of contact. Have a viable means of communication on you, a cell phone that works there. Um, have a key contacts. Now, I know there's some questions about whether or not cell packages work in, in, in Panama. Now, I do know that the major U.S. carriers, when they do international plans and they have international programs on your phone, um, it does apply to Panama. Um, I know, for instance, there are some carriers where if you pay $10 a day, um, you basically get all your regular services for the, for, you know, so data, texting, and, 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 uh, and, and phone are included, and you can use that internationally. There are some of those things. You might have another international plan with your cell device. Uh, Another option is getting a, a, a phone uh, when you arrive there at the airport or, or a SIM card that you can trade out. Uh, those are possible. So you have, a, you have a Panama number while you're, uh, while you're there in Panama. Um, so you could either way, whatever seems to work for you. Um, I, have, um, I can say I've been on a number of site visits and I've used my regular phone. Um, I've used, uh, I just simply added the international plan for the week or for the day that I'm there. 
and uh, it seems to work out pretty well. I haven't had any, any major issues. Um, having a local phone can be helpful at times to get that immediate thing, so that it might be helpful to maybe do both, to have both your cell phone as well as maybe a burner phone that you buy at the store or at the airport. So um, certainly ensure your ability to communicate. Um, uh, the other thing that I've that is very popular in Panama is a is a is an app called WhatsApp. Uh, many of you may already be using it, but that is one of the primary ways that people communicate in Panama. So um, if you want to, as they say, win in Rome, or I should say, win in <laughs> Panama City, uh, do as the Panamanians do, um, and so. So uh, having WhatsApp might be a great way for group text on your phone. Um, it's a great app, um, and, uh, and again, many of the locals use that as well. So, um, so that's well, that's that's to make sure you can communicate. The fourth challenge uh, is know the schedule of events. We gave that out at the beginning, um, and things do often change. So there are going to be apps uh, for World Youth Day where you can get the latest information about the schedule as well as the transportation plan. Um, it might be helpful for you as group leaders to. Uh, to take time to learn the metro route, to learn the train route, the bus route that are going to be most effective to you. So if, you never, if you're staying in a hotel or when you know your housing, which you may not know until maybe a month beforehand, but once you do know, it'll probably be essential for you to know the transportation plan right around uh, your area where you're staying so that you can always be conscious of well, this is the line that we have to take for the bus or these are the roads we have to walk that will ensure the best safety. So um, to make sure you, in advance you plot that out, I think uh, anytime I go to a World Youth Day, um, I've spent an afternoon just kind of going with a map of where I'm going to be, uh, looking at where all the major sites are that I need to go to, and just plot out where what are the, the main route and then maybe the alternate route of, uh, of what you can ultimately to have happen. So um, that's the ch fourth challenge. Make sure that you're aware of the schedule and the, and the location. The fifth challenge is know who to contact if you have any health or other emergencies. We already talked about the hospitals um, that are available. And uh, the 911 is not something that you would use in Panama, so you would dial 104, which is the National Police, or the Tourist Police in Panama City, 511-9260, um, or if you need to contact the embassy, that's their number as well. So uh, if you have an emergency, make sure you're kind of aware of those numbers. Um, that you can use on a regular basis, if not on a regular basis, but on an emergency basis. Uh, but make sure you have that with you so if an emergency should arise, uh, you know who to call right away. So, um, so that is uh, really um, what we need to do. The, the U.S. office um, in Panama City the, at, at, the, at the Hilton um, is another place you can go if there should be any issues. If it's an emergency, don't come to us. Definitely seek out um, emergency personnel. But if it's a non-emergency but kindly, kind of critical thing you want to know, um, you can contact us as well. Uh, we're looking into perhaps getting a, a hotline of sorts, but you can always stop by the, uh, the offices and uh, myself or Kelly uh, or one of our many staff that we'll have on hand uh, should be able to assist as well. Um, so those are just some things to keep in mind okay. as you plan ahead. So we do have a few more questions that have come in. Paul, can you address the days in the diocese um, and what's uh, happening with that? In terms of, um, yeah, I know that uh, that in generally the uh, days in the diocese are taking place. Those are the pre-World Youth Day uh, events where they have like you'll be in like doing mission work or uh, having an immersion into a particular culture for a couple of days. They are happening in many of the dioceses in, uh, in Panama, except for Panama City itself. Um, so everywhere but Panama City will have days in the diocese. I think Costa Rica will as well, and I'm not sure if there's any other countries, but between those countries, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people. Um, but you would need to, um, if your group wishes to participate in days in the diocese, um, you would need to uh, contact whatever diocese you wish to do that in uh, to, to set up those details with them. Um, and so if you want more information about that, you would go to the main World Youth Day website, which is panama2019.pa. Um, if you go to that website, link towards Days in the Diocese, they will give you some people to contact uh, so that you can get more information about where you might want to go. Great. Um, 
Stephanie, we had a question about that website that they need to check. Someone was wondering if you could tell them that website again to check for that, that vaccinations. Let me put my video and my sound back on. All right. <laughs> yes. So the the website is travel. Oops. Thank you. Hello. Yes. There there you go. So on the question about the vaccinations, you can go to travel.state.gov. Travel.state.gov. Great. Yes. And there will be a search box there, and you can put in Panama, and then there it will give you all the requirements for traveling to Panama, including vaccinations. Okay. So I, mm -hmm. go ahead. I, I also see a question about uh, asking what is an apostille. Mm -hmm. So I'll address that one as well. Go ahead. Uh, so as I noted, if you're if you are a minor and you're a dual national, you need a, you need a permission from both parents to travel with your group leader. Um, and what you need to get that letter first first needs to be notarized. So you can go to any U.S. notary to get their signature and a notary stamp. Um, and then you also need to go to your state's uh, your your state's state office, and they are the ones that do an apostille. So that's an additional document with a stamp that's placed on your, um, on that letter that's notarized that basically makes it uh, recognized in Panama. You'll need to do two things if you need to get a, a notarized letter. You need to get it notarized, and you need to get it apostilled, and I forgot to mention earlier, it also needs to be translated into Spanish. Wow, okay. Now, in the, the person really? that asked the question, um, noted that their son is not a dual citizen. So this is only a requirement for dual national minors. Dual national if minors. Adults, if you're an adult and you're a dual citizen, there's no. this is not a requirement. It's only for people under 18 years old. Okay. And so just to be clear, people under 18 years old, if they're dual citizens, have to have uh, that documentation that you just described, correct? Yes. And those details about that documentation is also located on travel.state.gov. Okay, great. Uh, Paul, there's a question about where the vigil event is going to be held. Is it the same uh, location as the other events, or are we going to a different site like we have in the past? Officially speaking, uh, that information has not yet been uh, released. Um, and uh, we await official, uh, official word from Panama um, from what I have heard, and the reason why the delay is there, is um, I think they're navigating between two locations, um, and they just they, they haven't yet been able to release that officially yet. Um, so uh, we will get, as soon as we hear officially that they've chosen one for sure, because every week I hear it's this one, it's that one, it's this one, it's that one. So um, there is nothing official as I know yet. Um, I don't know, Stephanie, if you've heard anything official yet. Um, I know we've heard rumors, but I don't think exactly. there's been Just rumors. Really. No. Just so rumors. Stephanie, uh, Eric wants to know, how does a mine, um, how about a minor, um, a youth uh, that's a U.S. citizen, um, is that document needed? No. If you're under 18 and your passport says you were born in the United States, or for that matter, any other country but Panama, you, there's no special requirement. You'll have no trouble leaving. Okay, great. All right, so that's just for dual citizens. Um, there's a lot of questions about getting the PowerPoint. Um, Kelly, I was wondering if we put your web, your email address into this, if we could maybe have folks, uh, I can get you a copy of the PowerPoint. Some folks were wanting that for their groups, and so I'm happy to share that. Um, would that be okay with you? Oh, yeah. Or is there a place that we can put it online, Paul? That can we just put it on the World Youth Day website? Um, uh, this, are, are we talking this particular PowerPoint? Will definitely yes, be available. Yes, this PowerPoint. Yeah, and, and actually, what I can do for everyone is I can kind of put some of our other PowerPoint slides together. So if people would like a a bank of slides for their pilgrims for a meeting, I'm happy to share those. Thank you. Thank you. So is is that okay, Kelly? If I, if we have them email you, or should we put it on the website? What's best, yeah, Paul? You can, you can either contact us at wyd at usccb.org, or, um, or yeah, we, and we will be putting things on the website as well. So um, okay. but if, you're, if you just want to reach out and, and talk to, to Kelly, she is very nice. So, you know, <laughs> you go ahead and email wyd at usccb.org, and, uh, and we'll certainly be able to help. Yep.
Great. Uh, is Wi-Fi regularly available? And is there any special thing they need to know in terms of electricity? Is it a different, uh, do they need an adapter? Um, for well, that's, that's one of the joys of Panama is that, um, you know, in some respects, and I, and I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but visiting Panama, um, you know, one could argue that it might be, it might feel like the southernmost U.S. city, city in the world. Because Panama City very much feels like, number one, they use American currency. Uh, the water is safe to drink. The buildings look very much like our skyscrapers. And uh, the electricity is the same as our electricity. So they use our same outlets. Um, they see the same voltage. So, um, so Panama uh, very much will feel like home for many of you. Um, so, uh, you know, and... Um, if you live in a bilingual area of the United States, um, again, you'll have a very similar experience there in Panama. So. Okay, great. Is, is there Wi-Fi available readily? Well, on a normal basis, Wi-Fi can be found <laughs> in different buildings and depends on where you're at. However, we're also aware that there will be an influx of people during this time. And, and I am sure that World Youth Day is negotiating with carriers for additional bandwidth. However, just to be, you know, just to be, just to be aware, when you have, you know, half a million, a million people all trying to get on, and these are all young people, which means they're all people who know how to use Wi-Fi and, and data, then cell, cellular coverage begins to constrict a little bit. So just be aware of that. Um, I always find it's when you prepare for something like World Youth Day, it's always good to prepare um, backup plans in case the technology does not work because even though we it, it might work like when we go down there uh, next week it will probably work out wonderfully but in January when you know half a million of our friends are there um, it may not work as well and so we have to be prepared for that mm -hmm. so always have backup plans um, if you have something electronically that you're trying to get access to make sure that you have a hard copy that you're bringing with you it may be an extra paper but in the case that the the, 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 the the web goes down, the you know the, the bandwidth is stretched, just be prepared. That would just be so it is available, but also be aware of those those realities. Okay, great. Um, so just one more time, just so that we're really clear. Um, Eric wants to know. Let's see, it keeps moving on me. Sorry. Um, we don't need that document for our minors that that are that are U.S. citizens, but we still need a letter of permission notarized by a notary public, right? That's the question, Stephanie. Do they, they, still, they need a letter? Does it need to be notarized? A letter of permission? So the letter of permission is only required for dual citizens. Okay. Minors that are born anywhere else mm -hmm. uh, don't require, don't have this requirement to exit or enter Panama. Okay, and what about for medical treatment there? Is there a requirement for medical treatment um, for a minor? It's not a bad idea to have a power of attorney um, from the U.S. if you require emergency service, but I've never seen anybody turned away because they're for medical. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. great. All right. Um, Paul, uh, how, how many people will be coming from around the world? Uh, they, they don't expect the numbers to be quite as big, do they? As, um, as you know, want to know. The, the estimates, I mean, so during the week itself, um, I think that they're gravitating between um, half a million and up to a million people during the week itself. But then when we get to the final mass, that's always unpredictable. Um, I mean, I think anywhere between a million and a half to two million people for the final mass are possible. Depends on... It really will depend on uh, the weather, uh, the circumstances, if there's any political, economic circumstances in that time of year that will prevent people from traveling. But as you may remember, the, the last events of World Youth Day, the final vigil in mass, or actually the final mass, is open to the public. So, um, so that's when the crowds will come in. And so uh, just remember, Panama is a small country, but, but this is one of the few times that Panama is receiving a papal visit. So this is, you know, a, a major event for the region. And so many people from the Caribbean and from Panama will be coming in for that final mass so that they can have an encounter with Pope Francis. Some of them will be young people and some will not be. So um, I would expect that final mass to probably be between a million and a half, maybe more pilgrims. Um, so, and I also see a question about the, the rainy season and uh, 
It is not. No, the rainy season is um, when we have summer in the United States, that's the rainy season in Panama. And when we have winter, when it is January and we are freezing cold here in the U.S., um, it is it is kind of summery there in Panama. There's And the precipitation is um, – now, there's always possibility of precipitation, precipitation but um, it's much greater in July and June and August than it would be in January. Okay, great. Uh, will there be an app yeah. uh, for – Yes, there will be. Okay, yes. great. And, I, and I, we'll, we'll put it on our website. Um, I think there, so they've got some apps. They've got some spiritual preparation apps that they've already developed. But World Youth Day itself will have an app with, like, the, the list of events and things like that. Okay, I think I've gotten everybody's, and we had about 86 total questions. So if I, I missed your question, please feel free now to type it in, and I'll catch it here at the bottom. Um, any any final thoughts, Stephanie or Tom, from your perspective uh, with regards to to the participation of U.S. citizens in JMJ? No, I think we've covered everything. Just encourage everyone to to be safe and and enjoy your time here. All right, great. Thank y'all so much for your input. How about you, Paul? Anything else that you need to share while I'm Sure, sure. And I'm also noticing a couple of questions that have gone through about Costa Rica. Um, and oh, yes, so, that's um, right. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, so we might want to just tackle that just because I know there's a couple of people who have asked about Costa Rica, which seems sure. to be if there's anyone visiting from anywhere else, uh, many people are going to travel maybe perhaps to Costa Rica oh, and then come in by bus. Yeah. Um, Stephanie, um, I know that uh, Costa Rica is not one that has a yellow fever uh, alert, so I think that would be fine for that. But are there any other issues regarding traveling from uh, from from Costa Rica to Panama that they should be aware of? No, other than what was already addressed, um, it's important to make sure that everybody in your group gets an entry stamp when they enter, if they're entering by bus, because sometimes the, the immigration officials do forget to put a stamp in a passport. So that's the only thing. So great. Um, Paul, there's a question about the Pilgrim package, what it includes, and then um, to the and there's also a question about priest credentials sure. and where they can pick those up. Um, so uh, first about the pilgrim package. The pilgrim package will include, as in most World Youth Days, um, it will include your backpack with all your, devo you know, some devotional items, a, a Bible, a rosary. Um, you'll probably get a water bottle in that as well, although, again, you want this one first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great trading item. Um, it will include uh, access to all transportation. Um, it will include the medical insurance that we were talking about before. Um, it includes meals. Um, now, it includes meals if you have purchased a particular package. So there are different meal packages and housing packages. Depends on what you've done. Um, so there's the basic core package, which includes the meals for um, most of the week. So from, uh, from Monday or Tuesday up through Sunday. Um, it would include that. You could add on a day at the beginning and a day at the end for some other packages. There's some packages where you can get housing and the meals. There's some packages where it's meals only, housing only. So you can mix and match. There's a variety on the website. There's a variety of different ways that your package can develop. So depends on what you pay for uh, will be included in that package. But all packages, regardless, will be transportation, your backpack, uh, your insurance. That will be on all the um, uh, on all the packages that, that, that exist there. And it gets you admission into all the main uh, events, uh, catechesis, the festival. So um, all of that's included in the Pilgrim Pack. As for where priest credentials pick up their, their, their information, um, that is still being developed. And uh, when, when they uh, release where the, pil the, the priest credentials can be picked up, uh, we will let you know. Um, every year it's a little different as to which what, 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 what the country is specifically asking for in terms of where the priest credentials are picked up. Um, so um, we don't know that yet, but when we do, we will let you know. Um, is the event, the venue for the U.S. event on Wednesday, is that walking distance from the Santa Costera? Yes, yes, it is. Um, and, and Stephanie, you can kind of, you've been, I, I, I haven't, um, I haven't uh, visited the, the site. I'm going to be visiting it next week. Um, but uh, the Amador Convention Center that, you know, you could probably walk to that from probably one end of the Cinque Costera or from some of the metro lines. Is that correct? Yep. It's walking distance. Um, it's a longer walk, yeah. but I understand that the programs are going to be ready to do long walks. 
I think it's a, it, I would say about a mile and a half. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. So there's some questions about mosquitoes and Sitka and should there be anything special people are need to pack to prepare for mosquitoes, like a mosquito net or mm-hmm. things with DEET in it? You know, yeah. is there anything you can tell us about that? Yeah. If you're if you're only going to be in Panama City, you most likely don't even require a mosquito net. We don't have many mosquitoes here, and Zika is not very prevalent in this part of the country. Um, if you're going to be in other parts of the country or staying in a in an area where there's jungle or camping, then it is recommended that you have a mosquito net and um, and as well as mosquito repellent. Uh, now, I think the the main resource for information about Zika would be the Center for Disease Control. So that would be CDC, cdc.gov, and I can try to put that in the in the chat. Um, okay. But it's cdc.gov, and uh, it's Zika, Zika, there is Zika here. So if you are coming and you are pregnant, you should be aware of that and take additional precautions. Or we can take the trip. Um, do we know where the pilgrims pack up their package yet, or is that all still coming? Still coming. Um, so we should know that by our January webinar for sure. Yeah, for the January webinar, you'll definitely, we'll definitely know that. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be different places. If anyone is staying in simple accommodations, such as a school, a church, a home, um, if that's something that you, you're staying in, that's where you'll pick it up. So you'll pick it up there. If you're not staying in that, if you're staying at a hotel or you're staying with families, um, they're still working out exactly where the central pickup places will be. So with regards to catechesis, a few people are asking about the site. Uh, right now, we, we don't have any information about that, but it'll be similar, we think, into what it was and other places where they'll be in churches and schools throughout the city? Yes, um, and I do know that there is, I mean, there'll be a smaller number of English speakers at this World Youth Day than there was in Krakow. So there'll be less churches um, that will have it, but um, so, uh, but yeah, it'll be it'll be by English, by language group. Um, and so I, I'm, we're not sure yet. I think what they're doing is they're, they're still getting in registrations, um, which means they're just, they're getting the number of what, how many in each language group they're going to need. And mm-hmm. so um, uh, that, that's how they determine how many catechetical sites they have. So um, that's why you haven't heard some of these things yet because they need to get all the registrations in before they make the decisions on what well, we need. You know, maybe we need 25 English language catechetical sites. Okay, that's great. So if they have 25, then they know which churches they have, and then they're they're trying to space them out so that there's not they're not all clumped in the same spot. So um, so that's why the delay, why we don't know it yet, because registrations are still coming in. So before they can really ascertain that, they want to get a sense as to what is our count and in, is this going to be inaccurate? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so Tom, there was a question about safety and walking at night. Um, you know, for example, on Wednesday night when folks are going to be leaving the, the convention center area f- to go back, can you, um, can you, you know, let us know what, what we should anticipate there? Yeah, like I said, there's, there's going to be a, a large number of, uh, of security personnel that are going to be uh, all along the Cita Costera and all along those areas that, um, you know, that are going to be blocked off for pedestrian traffic. But obviously, just like anywhere uh, around the world, there's strength in numbers. So, I, you know, I would, would certainly not recommend, uh, you know, traveling by yourself or something to that effect. I mean, go with, with uh, you know, a, a partner or another, you know, some other personnel, some other people. Um, and there's obviously going to be a lot of people around in general uh, walking around. But and then as you get you know, later and later into the evening and crowds thin out and, and things like that, um, you, know, you have to practice a lot better uh, situational awareness because those, uh, you know, those opportunities for the criminal elements, uh, you know, increase as there's less and less people around. Uh, but there will be a significant security presence uh, during all of the uh, all of the events, so yeah, it's really important in World Youth Day to, to stay with a crowd of people, not to have people wandering off by themselves, but to be together and walking as a group. Uh, that's really important. And then finally, um, just one more clarification: yellow fever is not required if we're traveling from the U.S. That's right, Stephanie. That's correct. All right, great. Well, I think we've gotten through all. 115 questions. <laughs> a lot. So um, I you think know, we have please anyway. Do, please do get in touch with us. If we haven't answered or if something's come up to you since then, 
you know, reach out to us, uh, you know. Is there an embassy the, website, Stephanie? I'm sorry, Paul, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And I see there's a question asking for our email address. Oh, and for some right. reason, I'm not able to text it in, but I'll, I'll just dictate it. It's Panama dash A C S at state dot gov. Okay, great. Um, mm -hmm. There is a very specific question um, about a border crossing with a bus and how far a bus can go in from Costa Rica. Hmm. I can't get to the actual question because my, there it is. Let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, Paul, uh, Oscar's on the website. I, I put the U.S. Catholic uh, store website up, World Youth Day, and he says the water bottles aren't on there. So if you have a specific link, if Kelly could put that in, that would be great. I think you were a good salesman if someone wanted to um, <laughs> buy one. So. No, thank you. Yeah, for, so, uh, we'll we'll make sure we we uh, we make sure that it gets in there. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll take care okay. of that. Um. So yeah, I I'm sorry, my computer. I can't get to. There's so many questions here. But there was one specifically about coming in from Costa Rica, and and can they um, how far that bus can come in and take them? So can I mean, I don't know if you can answer a question like that, but um, in that specific well, situation, but could they email you about it on that email? Sure. sure. That might be, for those kind of specific things, that might be the best way because there's lots of different circumstances. All right. Well, we kind of run out of our time, so we'll deal with some other questions like that. Um, we don't know about the vigil yet, Susan. We're still waiting to hear about the, the time for the vigil. Okay. Um, and by the way, the, the, the water bottle is indeed in the store. I put it in the chat, not in the Q&A, but in the chat, I put the link to the sports bottle. So not to worry, it's there. Okay. Hey, Jonathan. Oh, there you go. I was about to say, it wasn't letting me advance slides. Let me go back here. There we go. There we uh, go. Just a reminder for those of you who might be on that are part of stateside celebrations. There's a growing list of stateside celebrations um, for this World Youth Day. It's very exciting. Washington, Fort Wayne, South Bend, Seattle, Galveston, Houston, uh, Philadelphia, Fresno, Sacramento. So just be aware of that and, and the next webinar. Um, we'll be talking about that as well. Um, this is the World Youth Day USA.org. That's where you can find many of those resources that we talked about at the last webinar. Um, but also at this webinar as well. So visit that site. And then we have two uh, webinars left. One, the next time we'll really just focus on celebrating World Youth Day uh, in the United States. Uh, also being a digital pilgrim, so we'll be talking about that. And I think that'll be important for all of you who are taking folks to, to Panama because I think this World Youth Day is going to give us a chance in a way to connect digitally in a way that we haven't been able to uh, because I think so many people are going to be involved in that. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and then our final webinar will be January 8th uh, at 2 o'clock, and that will be all about last-minute things and kind of recapping some of what we have here. Thank you so much, Stephanie and Tom from Panama. We appreciate it. We can't wait to get there to, to see you, although I guess we hope we don't see you because that means we won't have a problem. <laughs> Paul and Kelly, thank you so much um, for your time and input today. We really do appreciate it. And I'll turn it back over to Jonathan. He'll explain a little bit about the recording here um, and where people can access that. Hi, just one second. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, just so that everyone's aware, uh, this video will be on WYD2019.us, hopefully in the next week or so. Given the Thanksgiving holiday, it may take a little bit longer, but all the video notes as well as uh, PowerPoint slides should be accessible on the website. Um, if there are any problems, please email info at catholicapostolatecenter.org um, if there are any other questions. Other than that, um, I hope everyone has a nice day.